distinguished ladies and gentlemen, could you please help me welcome to the stage the Honorable Minister for Education, Dr. Yao Educhu. Thank you so much. I thought you were going to talk about the research papers I've written. <laughs> that would have made it too long. Founder and president of Assessi University, Dr. Patrick Ewa, uh, members of the diplomatic corps, our uh, lecturers, our uh, students, Nime, uh, Name, Nananum, ladies and gentlemen, our friends from the media, it's an honor to be here this evening to have the opportunity to address such a uh, wonderful group of people who have come from far and near to support a great adventure by uh, Dr. Patrick Ewea. A great adventure indeed. I'm sure he has forgotten that before he started the university, I met him in Washington, D.C. Uh, we had a chat there. He told me about what we were going to do in Ghana. And um, it has come to pass. At that time, I had also begun the development of a charter school in Los Angeles. So he was coming to Ghana, and I was helping build the American education system. <laughs> and um, I did mine. I started the first charter school with 100 students, and uh, before I knew, I have so many students, so many, about 100 employees, while he, he was still in Ghana doing the unthinkable, developing a private university. Um, so he was an inspiration to those of us from Ghana who were in America. When we heard about his story and the work he was doing in Ghana, we were thinking, how do we go back? How do we support the great work that this young man is doing in Ghana? So, Patrick, some of us came to Ghana because we saw your example. And we saw the fact that after seeing America for some time, we could bring our idea expertise to the table. I always tell people that what I got from the United States of America was not so much the income I earned, but the idea that everything is possible. It's that sense of everything is possible that brought you to Ghana, and you've proved to the country and to the world that, in fact, everything is possible. And that, assessing, is a good example of believing in yourself, mobilizing resources, coming together, and doing a great thing. Ashesi University, no doubt, is one of the finest institutions in this country. As a minister for education, I'll get into trouble um, if I make a certain pronoun, but I can't help myself make it. <laughs> I always say that I can tell the difference between an Ashesi University graduate from any other graduate in Ghana. When they walk into my office, they have this sense of confidence about them. They look you in the eye and express their opinions to you, and you can see, and I can always predict 90% of the time that, in fact, this is a graduate of Ashesi University. You've done some wonderful things. Uh, here, and we need to applaud you for it. <laughs> Tertiary education is very important for our nation. When you look at uh, the landscape now in the fourth industrial revolution, if you don't improve tertiary education, you cannot improve the socioeconomic fortunes of your nation. There's no way we can transform the fortunes of Ghana if we do not focus on tertiary education. Understand that our gross tertiary enrollment ratio is 20%, one of the highest in sub-Saharan Africa, unfortunately. But South Korea is 93.6. So if you really want to look at how education transforms fortunes of countries, look at the gross tertiary enrollment ratio. We are not going to be able to change this nation if we don't take a serious look at our gross social enrollment ratio. But it's not just good enough to provide access and, and say that a vast majority of our graduates are at the universities. You have to begin to look at what they are doing there. How are they being taught? What is your general education requirement? Are you teaching them to be critical thinkers? Or you are just teaching them to memorize some notes of the professor? And if that is what you are doing, the latter is what you are doing, and then you know that your nation is not going to transform itself, even if you have a 90% gross tertiary enrollment ratio. So when we look at what Ashesi is doing, 
it's a good example for us as a nation and how we should strive to get a number of te our tertiary institutions to go the Ashasi way. An institution that is able to provide opportunities for their students to acquire the requisite skills through internships so that they can secure jobs in this country is something that we need to commend you for. You have done so much for this nation, and your example is the example of what I've just referred to as everything is possible. We know you have so many great initiatives. You've been able to do so much with the resources that have been trusted to your care, bringing MasterCard on board so that they can provide scholarships. The fact that 50% of your students have scholarships, the fact that 50% of your students are women, that in itself is a great accomplishment. That, let us truly clap for them. It's, it's something so commendable. And of course, they are doing my pet piece, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, uh, something that I believe we need to really do a better job at as a nation. We only have about 37% of um, our students, various universities and room in STEM-related fields. It has to change. If you go to School of Engineering at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, only 12.5% of the students are women. It has to change. So today, the government of Nana Dodanko Akufuado is building STEM schools across the country. And we're also building girls STEM high schools across the country. First one has been opened in my constituency. The next one is being built in Accra, Pong, Katamanso, with awarded contracts for a funded by Kuwait fund. Another one is being built in Kumasi for girls. But there are other 10 STEM high schools that five of them have been opened this year. Another five is going to be opened next year. Our goal is to make sure that we have students in the STEM-related fields in their numbers, create a pipeline from kindergarten all the way to high school. So when you see the Accra STEM Academy and are constructing East Legon, the vision is clear. We need to increase the number of students in STEM, but we don't want to wait till they get to the universities, especially in a country where if you go to high school and you do not do science, you cannot redeem yourself to say that one day you want to become an engineer. And that is something that we want to change. And I know that I tell the story of Kojo Mens, a young man who had a dream, and the dream he was speaking with, the, with God, and God was telling Kojo Mens that you're going to be the best engineer the world has ever known. And then he said, God, it's not possible. And God said, I created you. Why is that not possible? He said, God, you know what? I'm growing up in Ghana. And, and, and I'm in high school. And at the high school, my career pathway is visual arts. And nobody will ever allow me to become an engineer. But I always end by saying that what Kojo didn't know was that he was going to travel to the United States of America, and God knew that. And in America, a visual arts student in high school can become an engineer. Why can't that happen in Ghana? So I knew that if I was just to issue an edit and say, Every school should accept visual arts students to go and do engineering. They would tell me, you can't bring America to Ghana. <laughs> so what I had to do was to introduce a grant program and ask the university to submit proposals if they wanted to allow students who did general arts, visual arts, business to pursue engineering. Do one year pre-engineering, and from there, move on to do engineering. I got proposals from almost all the universities and two universities began. Now we have close to about 300 students pursuing pre-engineering, and they never did science in high school. I just want you to know that I don't believe in the fact that we can't bring about transformation in Ghana. Transformation can happen, but we need to find a way. Offer private universities the flexibility to do what is impossible in the public education space. So we are working with GTEC, the organization that is in charge of accreditation. And now the law is that you don't have to wait as long as my brother Patrick waited to, be, to get his charter. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. 
So we've raised the bar as to how you can be accredited, and you don't even have to be affiliated. But the bar is raised in such a way that you need to have the resources to start, and when you start, you don't wait for that long uh, to become chartered. We believe we need to provide an enabling environment, an ecosystem for tertiary institutions to transform our fortunes as a nation. We need to ensure that there's a ranking system that enables parents to know how well their universities are doing. Universities should not just leave off their names and prestige as premier institutions. Being a premier institution means you have to provide great outcomes so that parents will be able to know that if my child goes to Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology and does engineering there, he will secure a job. I don't buy the argument that some universities are making that they are not there to create jobs. Are we serious? Developing country, you are not there as a university to create jobs. What are you there for? So we're going to have to really begin to create that ecosystem um, to enable universities to perform their role with government funding, and, and you have to justify that the funding is being used well. So at Shasi University, on this occasion, uh, you brought me at a time when I'm flying out of the country, so I have to be short. <laughs> I have to, you know, I'm a teacher and a politician in both professions. If you don't speak, you are in trouble. <laughs> Some politicians have lost their jobs because their constituents said they didn't see them talking on TV. <laughs> so sometimes if I'm not careful, I'll talk for too long and overstay my welcome. I don't want to do that. I just want to encourage Ashesi to lead the way. And I tell you, some of us are watching. I'm going to create an enabling environment for more universities to follow you uh, because we know your outcomes are commendable. So to the board and to all the funding members of this institution, we are grateful to you. Ghana will remain grateful to you. What you've done is not just for the Ashesi University. You've done something great for this nation. And we want to commend you for it. There are some who sacrifice the comfort of life in America and other nations to come back home and contribute your quota to Ashesi University. But by so doing, you were contributing your quota to the socioeconomic transformation of Ghana. I believe that the better days of this nation, the better days of Ghana is not behind us, it's ahead of us. If we come together and do our possible best in our own small way, We'll transform this nation. I don't want to be part of the people who sit here for the next six years and do nothing and just lament and lambast the politicians and say, hey, look at them. Let us all do our bit. Do our part the Ashesi way. And if you get frustrated, remember, Ashesi was able to do it and therefore you can do it. Congratulations to Ashesi University. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister for Education, Dr. Yawe Duchum. We really appreciate your presence here tonight and for the long-standing partnership that Ashesi has enjoyed with previous ministers as well as the government of Ghana.